In this video, you're gonna learn how to make passive income by investing in dividend stocks. Dividends are awesome because they're the truest form of passive income. And investing in dividend stocks has been around for hundreds of years, and so you probably already know this, but it's not gonna be something that's gonna make you rich overnight. But if you keep it up over the long run, it's absolutely possible for you to one day live completely off of your passive dividend income. Would that be nice? We're gonna be covering what dividends are, the pros and cons, what dividend growth investing is, and the differences, dividend stocks versus dividend ETFs, and which ones are the best ones to buy, what to look for before you buy, and the mistakes to watch out for. And if you stay until the end, I'm gonna reveal the secret to reaching that point of living completely off of dividends as fast as possible. Dividends are a cash payment to shareholders. It's a way for a company to share its profits with its owners. Companies typically distribute dividends on a quarterly basis, meaning four times per year or once per year, but there are some monthly dividend paying companies out there as well. Dividends can also be paid on a one-off basis if a company, for example, sold one of its business units or sold some of its assets and now has a bunch of extra cash in the bank, it may choose to distribute that cash to shareholders as a one-off special dividend. Now here's how it actually works. When you own shares of a company's stock, it means that you own a percentage of that company. So for example, Apple over the past year has distributed $14.3 billion worth of dividends to its shareholders. And so if hypothetically you owned 1% of Apple's shares outstanding, then it would mean that you own 1% of the company Apple. And so therefore it would also mean that you would have received 1% of the $14.3 billion that Apple distributed as a dividend over the past year. Pretty cool, right? Now, some companies don't distribute any of their profits as dividends, and instead they choose to keep all of the profits and reinvest that money to grow the company even larger. And this is more common among newer companies that still have a lot of organic growth opportunities and ways to reinvest profits back into growing the business more and more. And usually it's the more mature companies that don't have the same reinvestment opportunities that choose to distribute most of their profits to the shareholders as a dividend. Most companies, however, do some sort of combination of both. There's actually four other things that a company can do with its profits besides paying a dividend, but we'll get into that later. The amount of a company's profits that they choose to distribute as a dividend is called the payout ratio. Apple, for example, we just said, paid out $14.3 billion of their profits as a dividend to shareholders over the past year. But their total profits over the past year was actually $86.8 billion. So in other words, they distributed 16.5% of their profits to the shareholders. And so Apple's payout ratio is therefore 16.5%. Is this making sense? So when a company has a high payout ratio, like 90 to 100%, then it means they're paying out most or all of their profits to shareholders as a dividend. And when a company has a low payout ratio, on the other hand, it means that they're keeping most of their profits to reinvest themselves instead. And with the goal of growing and making even more and more profits as time goes on. So this means that it's not necessarily a bad thing if the company keeps most of its profits or even all of its profits. Because if the company uses that money wisely and reinvests it right, then as the amount of profits that the company makes grows, their share price will likely grow as well at roughly the same rate. So you end up benefiting from the increasing value of the shares you own, even though you're not receiving any dividends along the way. And so you won't actually end up realizing any of your profits until you actually sell your shares one day. And that's actually one of the main advantages of dividends, that you start to get an actual cash in your pocket return on your investment right away, instead of needing to wait until you sell one day to put any cash in your pocket. One of the most important dividends financial ratios for you to learn is the dividend yield. And the purpose of the dividend yield metric is to see at a glance how much a company pays out in dividends over a one year period relative to its current stock price. Apple stock, for example, currently has a share price of $141.50. And over the past year per share, Apple has paid out 83 cents in dividends. So if you had owned and held your one share of Apple, you would have received just 83 cents in dividends over the past year. This means that the dividend yield for Apple right now is 83 cents divided by $141.50 
equals 0.59%. But when we look here on Google right now, it shows the dividend yield is 0.62%. And that's because this is what's called the forward dividend yield. The forward dividend yield takes the most recent quarterly dividend payment multiplied by four, because there's four quarters in a year, and uses this amount to calculate the dividend yield. So in the most recent quarter, Apple paid out 22 cents per share in dividends. Multiplied by four is 88 cents, and 88 cents divided by the current share price of $141.50 is 0.62% exactly what is shown here on Google. Cool, right? But a 0.62% yield is not considered a great dividend yield at all. And Apple isn't really considered a dividend stock per se. Now, an easy way to think about dividend yield practically is that for every $100 you invest in this stock, you will get 62 cents distributed to you in dividends over the next year. Now that's unless they increase the dividend, in which case it might be a little bit more, or it is possible for companies to decrease their dividend or even stop paying a dividend. The company has no obligation to continue paying a dividend just because they have in the past. Nonetheless, a 0.62% dividend yield might not sound that appealing to you because you might be thinking, well, I could put my money into a savings account and get something just like that. But the thing is with Apple, since they retain most of their earnings, you're also gonna benefit from the value of your shares increasing over time and not just from the dividends. If your focus is more on receiving dividend income though and not so much on share price growth, then you might prefer stocks with a higher dividend yield. A company like Coca-Cola has a dividend yield right now of 3.17%. And so this means that for every $100 worth of Coca-Cola stock that you buy, you will get about $3.17 distributed to you in dividends over the next year. Coca-Cola, by the way, has a payout ratio of 89%. So that means 89% percent of their profits get distributed to the shareholders as a dividend. This company 3M has a dividend yield of 3.35%, meaning that for every $100 worth of this stock that you bought, you would get about $3.35 distributed to you in dividends over the next year. 3M has a payout ratio of 58%. So they pay out 58% of their profits as dividends to their shareholders. And this company called Pet Med Express that sells pet products and pet medications online has a dividend yield of 4.49%. And this of course means that for every $100 worth of this stock that you buy, you would get about $4.49 distributed to you as a dividend over the next year. Pet Med Express has a payout ratio of 84%, so that means they pay out 84% of their profits as a dividend to shareholders. Now I mentioned these ones just to give you an idea of what's out there. This isn't financial advice or recommendations. Now one thing you should know about picking good dividend stocks to buy is that even if a stock is a good buy at one point in time, does not mean that it will always be a good buy. So you might see videos like the best stocks to buy this year, and those videos are great and all and can show you some potential opportunities, but let's take a look at Apple again for a second. This chart shows Apple's price since 2013, and of course it's gone up a lot since then. This line here shows the actual dollar amount they've paid out in dividends over this time each quarter. So we can see that back then it was paying out 10 cents per share, to now, in the most recent quarter, paying out 22 cents per share. Now this line here shows Apple's dividend yield over time. So back when Apple's price was $14.24 per share and they had a quarterly dividend of 11 cents at that time, which would be 44 cents per year, the dividend yield was 3.09%. But as the price of the stock increased at a much higher rate than the amount in dividend payments, it caused the dividend yield that you would get from buying that stock at the various moments over time since then to decrease. Right now at its current price with its current dividend payments, the dividend yield isn't that great <sighs> as you can see. So it might seem like it's best to go for the stocks with the highest dividend yield, but that's not necessarily true because you're also gonna to wanna to look at the payout ratio. Because if a stock has a 10% dividend yield, but a 100% payout ratio, then chances are that company's stock won't grow at all and you might've been better off buying a stock that had a 4% yield, for example, and only a 30% payout ratio. Yes, the amount of dividends that you're being paid would be smaller, but you would also be gaining from the stock price going up. Kind of like what happened for the people who bought Apple back in 2013, right? And a company with a lower payout ratio 
might also be more likely to be able to increase their dividend each year, whereas the company with a high payout ratio might not be able to actually increase how much they pay out in dividends because they're not growing that much. Let's say the company with the 4% yield increases their dividend by 5% each year. Well, after 10 years, your dividend yield on your original cost would be 6.5%. After 20 years, it would be 10.6%. And after 30 years, it would be 17.3%. So rather than focusing on what yields you're getting right now, it might be better to focus on what your yield on cost will be in 10, 20, or 30 years from now. Does that make sense? Some people refer to this as dividend growth investing. In dividend growth investing, when picking dividend stocks, you don't just go for the highest yield, but you also look at the payout ratio and the rate of which the actual amount of dividends that are being paid out to you is growing at. Now, if we're talking about dividends, I have to mention this. There's something called the dividend aristocrat list. A dividend aristocrat stock is a stock of a company that is within the S&P 500 and has both paid and increased its dividend every year for the last 25 consecutive years. There's currently 65 stocks on that list. And there's even something called the list of dividend king stocks. And this is a list of stocks that have both paid and increased its dividend every year for at least 50 consecutive years. And both of these lists could definitely be good places to go and look for potential good dividend stocks worth buying. And that's especially if we get a market crash or correction and they become much cheaper because of it. Vanguard has both a dividend appreciation exchange traded fund and a high dividend yield exchange traded fund. These might be good options for you if you're someone who doesn't actually want to pick individual stocks and you would rather just have your money spread out across a handful of dividend paying stocks. Now what makes dividends especially awesome is what happens when you reinvest them. What this would mean is that instead of taking your dividend payments and using that income to buy lunch and buy groceries or anything else, you instead reinvest that money and buy even more shares. This will make it so that the amount of passive income you earn will grow exponentially. Look at this. The red line is how a $1 investment in the S&P 500 would have grown between 1980 and now, assuming all dividends received were not reinvested. That $1 investment would have grown to $44. The blue line now shows how the same $1 investment would have grown if all dividends received were reinvested. And that $1 investment would have grown to $124. When you're reinvesting your dividend, the amount of shares that you own keeps going up. And because the amount of shares that you own keeps going up, the amount of dividends you receive increases as well. So the growth rate becomes exponential. Isn't that exciting? Now going back to this chart, unfortunately the power of dividends isn't quite that good because you need to pay taxes on your dividends before the money can be reinvested. And that tax drags down your growth over time just a little bit. This green line here shows how a $1 investment would have grown if dividends were being reinvested still, but with a 15% tax drag on the dividends before they can be reinvested. So your investment would have grown to $106. Is this making sense? If however you're investing in a tax-free account like the Roth IRA for example, there's a few others, then you don't have to worry about that tax drag. But if you're investing in a regular taxable account, then the taxes are going to slow down your returns, unfortunately. And that's actually one of the main disadvantages of dividends. Because if the company held on to that money and reinvested it for you, then there wouldn't have been any taxes to pay until the very end when you sell your stock. And that's actually exactly what Berkshire Hathaway did. This is the company that's controlled by Warren Buffett, who is probably the most famous investor of all time. Berkshire Hathaway makes a lot of profits, but they've never paid a dividend. Instead, they use all of their profits to buy businesses. Often that means buying entire businesses, but they also often buy just a percentage ownership interest of different businesses through buying shares of its stock. Right now, Berkshire is a $622.68 billion company, and they actually have a stock portfolio right now that has a market value of $293 billion. And all of the dividends that they receive from their massive stock portfolio, plus all of the profits from 
their wholly owned businesses that don't need to be reinvested back into those businesses all gets pooled together and is used to purchase even more businesses. Is this making sense? So if you want, you can actually think of yourself kind of like a Berkshire Hathaway. And you can buy a percentage of ownership in various businesses through buying shares of their stock. And when you receive dividends, you can use that money to buy even more business ownership in either the same stock or a different stock. And you can just keep doing this over and over again until the amount of passive income you're receiving from your dividends has reached a point that you can actually just live completely off of your passive income. Can you imagine if you did that? Now in this video right here, I detail exactly how long it would take you to go from zero to completely living off dividends. And so if you want to learn how long it will take, then this is the video to watch next. So click or tap here right now to watch that one next and I'll see you over there.